So we don't often think about this, but there used to be a world in which every image was unique. That is not the world we live in anymore, and really it's all because of printmaking. So what is printmaking really, and how did that all come about? Um, printmaking is my passion. <laughs> printmaking is my uh, studio medium of choice. It's where I dedicate the most time in my artistic practice. It's what I've really just decided to marry in the art world and because it's awesome. I love it for a million reasons. And it has a lengthy history, a really interesting history, and it has a bunch of different forms. Printmaking is kind of a big umbrella term with lots and lots of stuff within it. And I, you know, could attend college courses on every single little thing within it. Um, so this is kind of gonna be printmaking at the 100 level. Introduction to printmaking, printmaking 101, the most basic components of this awesome art form that will kind of be the tip of the iceberg on which we can continue to descend together as time goes on. So full disclosure, a lot of this information um, I am gonna share with you, I learned over several years of going to art school and several more years of being a practicing printmaker in the professional art world. So a lot of it is stuff I have locked up in my brain from various sources. I am, however, going to link below a cool site um, called Tribeca Printworks, which has a lot of information about printmaking, most of which um, I reference in this video, you can probably find there. So the definition of printmaking, what even is this? Transferring an image from a matrix or template onto another surface, usually paper or fabric. So if we really think about that definition for a second, that is incredibly valuable. It is not just the creation of an image, it is the creation of a matrix with which you can make oftentimes infinite numbers of images. It is the dawn of image sharing. If we think back to ye olden days in which artwork only existed for you if you lived in a castle or if you attended a really nice church, um, it wasn't in the hands of the people. Art wasn't accessible to everyday people. And printmaking made art, not just visual, but language arts as well, available to everyone. So to take you way back to the dawn of printmaking, we would go to Han Dynasty China. Sometime between 206 BC and 220 AD, they were printing using wood blocks on silk. And I will talk about what the heck a wood block is and what really you have to do to create a print in this video, but bear with me, we're getting right down to the very root of it. So way back then, they started printing with wood blocks. Fast forward to about 1048, they had created movable type. Suddenly, art and language were accessible to everyday people with this dawn of movable type. I mean, I think we probably all remember Johannes Gutenberg from history class, but it really all stemmed from Han Dynasty China. So let's give them credit where credit's due. So I call printmaking an umbrella term with lots of things underneath it. And those different things underneath it would be the various techniques that count as printmaking, which once again is creating a matrix which can create multiple images. Um, mm, never mind. It's using <laughs> creating a matrix which will then print an image at least one. I'll explain momentarily. So, what are the forms of printmaking? Relief, intaglio, lithography, seriography, aka screen printing and monotyping. I'm gonna explain what all of those are as um, succinctly as possible. Okay, so let's start with that first one, shall we? Relief printmaking, explained to you from the comfort of my beautiful blue velvet couch. We're gonna call this one the OG, and we're starting with it for a reason. Remember those wood blocks I was talking about back in 206 BC? Those would fall under the category of relief. So what exactly does that mean? So relief printmaking is everything from wood blocks to linoleum cuts to even I would say letterpress type. Now I'll explain what that means. Relief really is working in the negative. So carving away to create an image rather than working with what you put down on a page or working with what you take away. 
So to make that make sense, I'm going to be showing you a quick demonstration of how I would carve a linoleum print. And this is similar to how you would make a woodblock print. It's just using a different plate. A plate is a printmaking surface. So linoleum is a carvable surface. I'm going to use these linoleum carving tools or lino gouges to take away parts of the plate. So I'm peeling out pieces as I carve them away here. And anything I carve is going to be the white of the paper when I pull my print. Now this technique takes some patience, it takes time. These are pretty sharp tools, so it's best not to rush through it. You've gotta just watch what you're doing and kinda of just get into the meditative nature of the process. This is far from the most labor intensive of the processes I'll talk about in this video, but it does take a little bit of elbow grease to carve an entire plate, especially when you carve one that is bigger than the one I'm working with here. There are some versions of linoleum that are easier to cut. There's like an easy carve linoleum out there that's more the consistency of rubber, sort of like a pink eraser. This linoleum that I'm working with is the traditional battleship gray. It's more stiff, it's kind of leather hard, so it just takes a little bit more effort to carve through it with your cutting tool. Keeping a sharp knife is best practice for sure. I have to say, the work really pays off. It takes a lot of time to get all of these grooves in your image depending on how complex a picture you're carving, but watching the progress happen in real time is pretty satisfying. Now, believe me when I tell you, there are very few things in the art world as satisfying as inking a linoleum plate for the first time. I'm gonna show you what that's like here. I'm using just a simple one color to print these mushrooms. If you use more than one color, it can get even more satisfying because it's just really cool to see the ink blend together as you roll it out with your brayer. That's what the printmaking roller is called. So I'm just gonna roll it out to a nice even consistency, get the whole brayer coated, and make sure that it's not too thick in any of the spots. And then I'll be rolling it right on this plate. And once your ink looks like this, it's ready to go on your plate. That is your printmaking surface. So here I'm gonna roll it on and we'll see the image appear for the very first time. So as you can see, wherever I've carved away got no ink, anything I left intact got the ink, and when I push the paper onto the surface, it's going to print the image on the page. Now some printmakers use a printing press to print their linoleum cuts, but I prefer to do it by hand. You can use a spare brayer or you can use a wooden spoon. That's actually what a lot of printmakers use. I trust my wooden spoon with my life. I didn't have it on hand at this point in time, so I'm just using a spare roller that I had. And now for the very best part, seeing your print for the first time. This seriously never gets old. Okay, so I think that covers relief pretty much entirely. Let's move on to relief's counterpart, Intaglio. Intaglio is the exact opposite of relief. Instead of the ink printing off the surface of a plate, it prints off of the grooves. So the ink sits inside the grooves that you carve into the plate and it needs to be printed through a printing press, making it a little bit more complicated, a little bit less accessible. And this technique includes various subsets of techniques, including etchings, aquatints, and mesotints, which are insanely complex. So we'll stick with just intaglio in general as I explain the technique here. 
Intaglio requires lines to be etched or carved into a plate, which can then hold ink to be printed. So in this demonstration, I'm showing how you spread ink on an Italio plate. These plates can be made of zinc, other types of metal, um, and even cardboard, which is what this one is here. And I'm spreading the ink into the grooves and I'll just have to make sure that it gets into all of them. And this cannot be printed by hand. It's gonna require immense pressure to push the ink out of those grooves and onto the paper. So that's why Intaglio requires a printing press, which will exert like thousands of pounds of pressure onto the plate to yield the image. Like I said, Intaglio printmaking is a little bit less accessible since it requires one of these printing presses, which are extremely expensive to purchase. So shout out to the Western New York Book Arts Center, which is where I filmed this video. I'm using their etching press, which is available to the community of printmakers in the area, which is pretty awesome. Okay, so next up is lithography, which with the exception of the mezzotint, which I didn't explain for a reason because it would take too long and it just, it can't be covered in printmaking 101. That would be like a 200 level course. We have lithography, the most labor intensive of these techniques. So lithography became popular in, I believe, like the early 1900s, 1920s with advertisements. This is what most of like those old Art Nouveau advertisements were created using was lithography. And it's so labor intensive because it involves taking a flat sheet of stone, I think typically limestone, um, grinding down the surface until it is the perfect grit and removing whatever previous image was on the surface of the stone, taking a grease pencil, drawing your entire image, and then going through a lengthy chemical etching process to etch the lines that you drew into the stone. And then the inking and printing process requires an assistant because the roller is like this long and very heavy and someone has to be constantly wetting the stone with a sponge while you're rolling ink on it putting the paper on and sending it through a press um also if you were to do the old advertisements like you would see i don't like alphonse mucha's beautiful lithograph advertisements for like let's say job cigarettes um each color in that poster would have required its own stone talk about a registration nightmare um, oh yeah, we haven't defined the term registration. Uh, that would also be in the 200 level course. So I don't really have any examples on hand for you when it comes to the last two techniques that I have yet to define, screen printing and monotyping. They're just not as much my thing. I don't devote as much time to perfecting those techniques. Um, so I don't really have any examples on hand for you. Uh, but let's dive in anyway. Screen printing is how we get really cool graphic t-shirts and also a lot of other cool images, not necessarily just on fabric. But the technique of screen printing takes a screen, yes, like the screen that you would find on your window, um, but probably a finer, I don't know, gauge holes, the holes would be smaller on the screen printing screen. And you leave an image on the screen either by painting it on by hand using like a resist fluid, um, or there's like some emulsion photographic techniques you can use to get an image on the screen, which will create a resist. You put the screen on top of 
a piece of paper or fabric, you put ink at the top of the image, you take a squeegee and bring that ink down. It will not go through the screen wherever you have the resist of your image and it will pass through the screen where it is able to pass through and thus you will be left with a cool image. And last but certainly not least is monotyping. Now way back when I listed these different forms of printmaking and I went back to the definition and said it's creating a matrix which will yield multiple images, I stopped myself because of monotyping. Like the beginning of the word will suggest, monotyping will yield only one image, but it is still a printmaking technique. The reason being that it involves a matrix with a image on it that is transferred onto paper using ink. So with a monotype, you would have a metal or oftentimes plastic plate. You would create an image directly on the surface using ink and like a paintbrush or you know whatever tools you want really to leave the ink on the surface in specific spots. You would run it through a press just like you would an etching um, or any type of intaglio print and the entirety of the ink would press off onto the paper, erasing the image on the plate. So a mono print will only yield one image, but is still a printmaking technique. It's very fun, it's very spontaneous, just like a cool, loose form of printmaking. People do really incredible stuff with monotyping. Um, I'd like to try it out a little bit more than I have in the past, so maybe you'll see that on the channel. And that concludes Printmaking 101, so if you stuck it out through this marathon, thanks for being here. I wanted to preface what it is I do in my studio practice so that I can make more in-depth printmaking videos on this channel about my processes and what I am making in my studio time. So thanks for sticking it out, and I look forward to sharing more with you soon.